welcome. Welcome to another one of these videos, uh, all three of you. And uh, we've had a, um, a look over the, the past couple of weeks at uh, different things to do with reading the Bible. Um, and I now would like to take a look at the issue, the subject of fear. Um, it, it is a theme that runs through the scriptures, actually, that God does not want us to be full of fear. He wants us to be free of fear. And I think it's particularly important for us to think about this at the moment because you may have perceived the same thing. But it seems to me that in the situation that we're in at the moment in our world, fear is rising. I think there was already a significant level of anxiety in many people's lives. And now, as a result of the, uh, the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic, there's been a rise, I think, in fear for personal safety and for health and a fear of death and then over the last few days there's been this very horrific murder of uh, George Floyd in the United States and the the repercussions of that and the turbulence that's come from that again is causing fear to rise and God is clear I think in the Bible that he wants to set us free from fear he wants us to live in peace and so I want to spend a little bit of time over the next uh, couple of videos just thinking about the way in which the good news of Jesus is able to set us free from those debilitating fears that can really harm our lives um, but first of all almost counterintuitively really I want to start with the, the one sort of fear that the Bible speaks positively about. That might sound strange. But there's one fear that in the Bible we're told is a kind of essential. And that's the fear of God, the fear of the Lord. I think it's much misunderstood, but it's very, very important. Um, a number of times in the Bible we read this, uh, this sentence, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You see how basic this is, that if we want to live lives that are wise and wisdom is, is all about practical uh, goodness. It's about making the right decisions. It's about living life on the right path. Wisdom comes from, begins with the fear of the Lord. It's a very practical thing. So there's a sense in which I think what this means is that unless we grasp who God really is. Unless we grasp his power, his holiness, his majesty, then we're never going to make the right sort of decisions in our lives. The very first thing that we have to understand about ourselves, about our world, about our universe, is that it is ruled by a God who is powerful and mighty and holy a good and a just God and that actually as we recognize who he is as we have a proper understanding of him we can begin to live our lives in the right way in response to who he is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and of course that sense that word fear yes it means to be in awe of God because of who he is, to, to have that reverent attitude towards God. But I think there is a reason why the word fear is used here. There is a sense in which we tremble when we really recognise who God is. We don't take him lightly, we take him seriously. There is that healthy fear of a holy God in our lives when we really recognise who he is. And this kind of fear is a very practical thing in our lives. I think when you live with the fear of God, when you understand who God is, when you're in awe of his holiness and his glory, you don't sin. In those moments when you are in awe of God, you do not sin. It changes how we live when we have that before our eyes and that's an interesting phrase before our eyes when Paul in Romans chapter 3 is talking about the fact that 
Jews and Gentiles alike, he means you know, everyone in the human race has this same problem of sin. No one is sinless. Everybody uh, rebels against God, walks away from God in one way or another. And he quotes lots of different Old Testament uh, verses in support of this. And one of them comes from Psalm 36. And he says, they do not have the fear of God before their eyes. In other words, Paul is saying, if you don't have the fear of God before your eyes, if you're not constantly aware of this glorious and and powerful and holy God, then you will sin. When you do have the fear of God before your eyes, it changes how you live. So we're uh, really um, compelled and encouraged and urged in, in the scriptures to take God seriously and to take sin seriously. But there's a really crucial thing about the fear of God. Uh, which is that the fear of God, and when we have this sense of who God really is, it does not drive a wedge between God and us as his people. In fact, it brings us closer to him. I think our instinct is to think, well, if if we have a fear of God like he's some kind of scary tyrant, then we would keep our distance from him. And yet it's it's basically the complete opposite. It's because God is not a tyrant, because God is actually full of love, but he's also holy and powerful. We know that if we really have a right grasp of who God is, what are we going to do? We're going to run to him, not away from him. In fact, he's far too powerful for us ever to think about running away from. And he's far too loving for us ever to think of running away from. We want to run to him because it's in him we find our safety and our refuge, as many of the Psalms say. And one of the ways that we we can see that actually the fear of the Lord leads us towards God is in the Psalms. Let me just read you uh, four different uh, verses from the Psalms, which all illustrate this same thing. So in Psalm 24, verse 14, we read this. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. Or in a different translation, the Lord confides in those who fear him. You see that picture of an intimate friendship, an intimate relationship where God shares his heart with those who fear him. Then Psalm 33, verse 18. The Lord watches over those who fear him and those who rely on his unfailing love. So there's a a coming together of the idea of fearing the Lord, trusting in the Lord, knowing the Lord's unfailing love. And for those people, the Lord watches over them. There is protection. And that's repeated in Psalm 34, Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord surrounds and defends all who fear him. And then finally, Psalm 103, verse 13. The Lord is tender and compassionate to those who fear him. He knows how weak we are. So it seems to me that the Lord, the fear of the Lord is an antidote in our lives to pride. Pride is what raises up, us up against God saying, I want to be God, I want to be in control. And it seems that the fear of the Lord, which goes along with trusting in him and with acknowledging his love for us, is a recognition that he's the one who's in charge. And what a great place it is to know that we have a, a, a powerful, a good, a holy, a just God who is in control. The fear of the Lord leads us into that intimate relationship of love with this God of power. I think that's an amazing thing that we're uh, drawn into by this um, invitation to fear the Lord as the beginning of wisdom. So just to finish with two examples of this uh, which come from the New Testament. You have first of all uh, Peter. 
when Jesus is calling his followers, his disciples to him. And in Luke chapter 5, we read about this miraculous catch of fish. And as they haul in these fish, Peter recognises that this is the Lord. And that he says, I've got to get away from you. He says, get away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. I shouldn't be in your presence. And how does Jesus respond to this, you know, this correct assessment of the situation that Peter uh, comes to? He says, don't be afraid. And he says, I'm going to I'm going to bring you with me. Don't be afraid. And then the same sort of thing happens in, in Revelation chapter one. We read of John, the Apostle John, who knew Jesus, who loved Jesus. And he has this vision of the risen Christ, the ascended Jesus, in all of his power and his glory, blazing with purity. And we're told he fell down like a dead man, full of fear. And we're told that Jesus put his hand upon John's shoulder and said, do not be afraid. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but we don't stay in a place of falling down like a dead person because the Lord puts his hand on our shoulder and says, don't be afraid. So we're gonna think more about this um, leading that God wants to, to, this place that he wants to bring us into where we can know um, a, a freedom from fear in his presence and in our lives. So let's just pray um, as we think about this. Lord God, we pray that we would take you seriously, that we would not be flippant in our relationship with you, that we wouldn't take you for granted, but that we would know your awesome power and that we would hear those words that you speak to us, don't be afraid. And that, that would give us all the more of a sense of uh, love and reverence and awe for you. Help us to trust you with our whole lives. Amen. Mm -hmm.